Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Khaled Saba. I'm a consultant in cardiology and cardiac electrophysiology at Emirates Hospital in Jumeirah. Electrophysiology is the study and the treatment of abnormal heart rhythms. A normal heart rhythm is usually irregular and goes from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Obviously in some scenarios such as exercise or fever or being uh, surprised, etc., cetera, um, the heart rate can go much higher. And this is accepted and this is co also considered normal. However, there are particular scenarios where the heart rate suddenly jumps to 150s, 160s, 180s, or even more beats per minute. And those are pathological conditions which electrophysiology tends to diagnose and then treat. Furthermore, there are some scenarios where the heart rate becomes very slow, 40 beats per minute, 30 beats per minute, etc. Electrophysiology also tackles these slow heart rates and figures out why this is happening and what can be done about it so that the patient does not have any of the symptoms that are associated with a very slow or a very fast heart rate. Well, an electrophysiologist is a cardiologist who has specialized in heart rhythm abnormalities. He is an expert in very slow heart rhythms and in very fast heart rhythms, and they can treat both of these conditions. Slow heart rhythms are typically treated with implantation of a device that's called a pacemaker. And then fast heart rhythms can be treated either with medications or with procedures such as ablation procedure. An electrophysiologist is a skilled cardiologist who has specialized in performing these procedures, whether it is implantation of devices or whether it is ablation for the abnormally fast heart rhythm. You should certainly see an electrophysiologist once you feel that there is something that is abnormal with your heart rhythm. So symptoms that are associated with abnormal heart rhythm. So what are these symptoms? Well, a skipped beat, missed beat, heart racing. These are typically associated with an abnormal heart rhythm. Furthermore, things like extreme fatigue, palpitations, irregular heart rhythm, whether that is fast or slow, that's also associated with abnormal heart rhythms. Feeling extremely dizzy or even having passing out or feeling that you're about to pass out, syncope, all of those are considered symptoms that you should certainly see your electrophysiologist for. And finally, any sort of very slow heart rates, you know, in the 40s or 30s or even low 50s, somebody is young and healthy, um, those are things that you should certainly see an electrophysiologist for. Assessment of a heart rhythm problems initially starts with you. First thing you need to know is if there's any sort of symptoms, irregular heart rates, abnormal heartbeats, skipped beats, etc. You would typically present to a cardiologist or an electrophysiologist. The first thing that they would do is a physical exam. They would listen to your heart and see if there is any sort of abnormality in that heart rate and heart rhythm. We could actually hear an abnormal heart rate or a heart rhythm with a, with a simple stethoscope. So that's the first thing that we would do. Second is we would usually get an electrocardiogram, which is that pink sheet with squiggly lines. Funny enough, we know how to read these and they mean a lot of, to us. So we would be able to have a very, very good understanding of what the heart rhythm and what the heart rate is doing at that time point. The third thing that we can do is if we want to monitor what your heart rhythm and your heart rate is doing while you are at home, is we can give you a small device that you would put on your chest for 24 hours, 48 hours, seven days, you know, depending. And that would be able to tell us the heart rhythm throughout those time period where you were wearing that device. Electrophysiologists are skilled in performing many procedures. First, they are experts in implanting pacemakers and defibrillators. Second, they are experts in treating very fast heart rhythms or irregular heart rhythms through a procedure that's called an ablation procedure, which is when you cauterize the area which is causing these abnormal heart rhythms. Third, they do a procedure that's called a tilt table test. It's when we put the patient on a bed and tilt them at a certain position to see if there is any abnormal heart rhythm or abnormal uh, blood pressure that is instigated with this particular position, and this can give us a lot of information. In addition to that, an electrophysiologist can perform all the other procedures that a cardiologist can do, including uh, stress tests, whether that is treadmill stress tests or nuclear tr stress tests, etc. cetera. Uh, echocardiograms, whether that's stress echocardiograms or regular echocardiograms. 
um, tilt table testing, halter monitoring, etc. So your, your electrophysiologist is a cardiologist who performs all the basic functions of the cardiologist, but in addition to that, they're able to perform the uh, advanced techniques of uh, uh, maintaining rhythm control. An EP study or an electrophysiology study is when we get the patient to the cath lab, we put very, very small catheters into particular areas in the heart, and then we try pacing the heart at different intervals and at different uh, speeds. This would typically give us a lot of information about the heart. First, it would tell us if the patient needs a pacemaker or not. Then it would tell us if a patient is having an abnormal heart rhythm and to tell us exactly where that abnormal heart rhythm is coming from, which would facilitate identifying it and then cauterizing it or ablating it if need be. An EP study is typically done while the patient is in a conscious sedation. So basically they're, you know, between ha half asleep and half awake and uh, the patient would be able to leave on the next day. After the EP study is done, patients are typically moved to the room where they lay flat for a couple of hours. And then after that, we monitor them for a few hours. Typically, patients would stay with us overnight, monitored overnight. And the next day, if everything is fine, they'll be able to go home. EP studies are one of the safest procedures that can be done in the cath lab. And as a matter of fact, with the newer techniques in terms of catheters, in terms of mapping systems, we are able to know exactly where our catheters are inside the body. We are able to know exactly how much force we are pressing with our catheters, and we are able to know exactly what the power of that catheter is exerting at that tissue uh, in the heart. With all of these new advancements in our catheters and mapping systems, as well as the very high safety profile of EP studies, ablation and EP studies have become the standard of treatment for most of our arrhythmias. Electrophysiology studies are typically done under conscious sedation. So our patients are typically very relaxed and pain-free. They are able to communicate with us if need be. However, most of the time they are sleeping. The pain that they might feel is only at the beginning of the procedure when we numb up the groins and we numb up the area in the skin where our catheters will be going in. This typically feels very similar to what you would feel when you are at the dentist. And it only lasts for... 15 to 20 I seconds. encourage my patients to go back to their daily routine after their EP studies as soon as possible. In fact, my patients would be able to walk within two to four hours after an EP study. They are able to go back to their usual day-to-day -day activities, including going to the gym and exercising and running and carrying heavy objects within four to five days after an EP study. Within these four to five days, right after the EP study, you need to take it a little bit easy meaning you can only carry things that are less than five kilograms. You cannot jump. You cannot immerse yourself in a body of water or a pool or a hot tub, etc. But then after the five, fifth day, you can go back to your usual day-to-day -day activities with no questions and no concerns.